Welcome, Commander, to this Elite Dangerous Odyssey Mining Guide, where I hopefully teach you how to laser mine an Elite Dangerous like a pro. In this money-making guide, we will be shooting all the footage in the glorious Python, although you don't need a Python to do this. You can be flat broke in a Type 7, and three trips later, you'll have the glorious Python fully kitted out. With this speed mining build, it generally takes me less than 15 minutes to start mining and already be at the cell location, completely ready to rake in a bunch of space cheddar. Let's go over the build. Now for your hard points, you will want four 2D lasers. Lay them out just like I have it. That one in the middle, you won't need it. For utility mounts, you can pretty much stuff whatever you want in there or leave it blank. I just have a couple heat sink launchers as well as a couple shield boosters. For your core internals, you will want to A-rate absolutely everything except for your life support and your sensors. You can also go with a half-size fuel tank if you like because we will have fuel scoop. Just like any typical guy, I like to get in and get out as quickly as possible, so this is a speed run build. We're going to be running with two cargo racks as well as three 5A collector limpets. You can use B-class collectors if you want, although I like the longevity of the A-class, so that's what I'm using. We'll also have a 4A fuel scoop. Now this is very important, you want to make sure that you have an A-class prospector limpet. Although you don't need a shield generator, it definitely helps if you bounce off the rocks. Now for the refineries, definitely go with a 2A. It has magic fairy dust sprinkled all over it, so it even has more cargo space than a bin of that size. Most definitely don't forget your detailed surface scanner before you leave, or you won't be able to find the hot spots and you'll be pissed off. So this happens to everybody, even seasoned mining veterans like myself. But try to do your very best to remember to stock up on limpets before you leave. Now, you're gonna forget, it happens to everybody. Just make sure that you have enough. It's always a good idea to have too many than not enough, because you can always flush the extra ones out into space. Now that we have all of our limpets sorted, let's talk about fire groups. Now, I'm the ultimate lazy commander, so I have all of my collectors as well as all of my mining lasers on one. I'll put my prospector on too, and for my second fire group, I just have the detailed surface scanner on it for when I need to find hot spots. One of my favorite systems to do mining in Elite Dangerous Odyssey is the Omicron Capricorni B system. We'll be mining in the rings at the first planet on the second star, BB-1. This system is pretty glorious. It has two double overlapping platinum hotspots, which make finding platinum super easy. But don't worry yourself, none, Commander. There's plenty of really cool places, and I'm going to show you exactly how to find them later in the video. But for now, I'm going to load up here, you know, in less than 15 minutes. Made it to BB1, but before you can actually just drop right down into the rings there and start mining in a random location, you want to be able to know exactly where these hotspots are. It totally and completely matters because mining out of a hotspot means you're probably not going to find a whole lot. So make sure you activate your surface scanner and then just fire some probes at the ring. This planet only has one ring, although some planets will have multiple, so you'll have to scan each of the rings separately. Now sometimes it totally sucks, but the hotspots won't show up visually, so you have to exit Super Cruise, re-enter Super Cruise once again, and then they'll magically show up for whatever reason. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Realistically though, that doesn't matter, so make sure you head over to the navigation panel, make sure you select points of interest, and just look for the two close platinum hotspots. Whenever you drop into a double overlapping hotspot, you always want to make sure that you drop into a location where they're, you know, actually going to overlap. So in this case, I'm going to target the nearest one, fly towards the farthest one, but I'm making sure that I'm dropping into a more densely packed area of asteroids, represented by the bright white color there. We dropped into a really good location. I did drop into the thicker patch area. Now we're just going to fly towards that other platinum hotspot once we get down towards those rocks. Now before you start mining going all ham and start collecting a bunch of platinum and bringing it on board, you better let these pirates scan you first. Once they leave, you're free to switch back to your primary fire group and start prospecting rocks. Now, I will generally mine anything that's over 10%, but since we're in a double platinum hotspot, chances are we're going to be finding some super duper good rocks and upwards up to 60% platinum, which is totally glorious. Looks like the first rock is 23%. That's definitely good enough to mine. We're going to start with that one. On this rock here, there are actually three different types of elements as well as engineering materials as well. Now, all of your little army of collector limpets is going to go out there and collect absolutely everything. 
Now let's say that you don't want absolutely everything, like there's a couple other elements besides the platinum that I do not want, you can actually set all that stuff to an ignore list and your limpets won't even collect them anymore. This next rock here, I'm going to actually highlight a common mistake that a lot of commanders make. Now, they don't put full pips to weapons, and they just end up mining these rocks at two pips, and that's, you know, not very good, because it's going to take you much longer to daggone mine these rocks if you do it that way, so don't forget. The moment that I deplete these asteroids, I'm going to immediately look for another rock to prospect while my little collector limpet bros are out there collecting all my loot for me. Man, it's like one rock after another, and that one's 63%. A lot of these rocks will be rotating in space, and if, you know, you care about limpet lives and you think they matter, then kind of mine like this. I don't, you know, really care that much. I generally come out here with a whole boat pile of limpets anyway, so if they decide to smash themselves on the rock, then so be it. Survival of the fittest, I always say. On this rock, I did take the time to put all pips to weapons, and as you can see, I'm like burning through this rock like crazy, and I didn't even use all the power in my distributor. If you don't have the glorious python, and you have like the type 7, you're gonna have to go through your distributor power, I believe, like three times, so it's not as fast, but you know, it would only take you three trips in the type 7 to earn yourself a fully kitted out glorious python, just like I'm flying right now. Well, you know, except for all the engineering that I have put on it. But that's not required. Now, well, I guess I'll give a crap about limpet lives since I guess they matter in a video where you're trying to teach people how to mine properly, so I'm gonna go out of my way to match the trajectory of this asteroid so it doesn't, like, smash into my ship or my limpets. That way they can collect and, you know, live happy little lives as long as they can. At this point, we're only a few rocks in, and I'm already having to jettison a whole bunch of these extra limpets. Now, don't worry about it. They're super cheap. It always is better to have too many than not enough, but I guess I could have bought less. Yeah. God, it's like you can't even go like a few hundred meters in space without tripping over a really good rock, like over and over. Man, I'm really, really loving it here. And the good news is it's located right in the bubble near most of all the really, really good cell locations, which is why you're going to want to come here if you don't own a fleet carrier. Eventually, and by eventually I mean only just a few minutes after getting here, you're going to be loaded up pretty much all the way with platinum, but don't make this mistake right here. And if you do, I'll show you a workaround because I just made it. So the classic blunder that I made was I thought that last rock had plenty of platinum in order to fill up my cargo hold as well as my hopper, but unfortunately it did not. So we are going to have to blind mine these rocks, any rocks that has platinum in it since I have everything else on my ignore list besides engineering materials, my little collector limits are going to fly over there and get it. Yep, there's platinum in that rock right there. There we go, only had to blind mine just a couple rocks. My refinery is now totally and completely full. Now let me show you how to get the very best price possible. First, let me show you edtools.cc forward slash miner. It is an absolutely amazing tool to help you find all the most glorious overlapping hotspots. Now this miner's tool will show you a recommended cell location, although I do not do that because most of the time it's going to be outdated and you don't want outdated information because then you'll go there and not be able to sell all your things. Instead, head over to Inara, click on the data tab, then the commodities tab. You'll want to set the commodity as platinum if that's what you're mining. Definitely input your nearest star. We're at the Omicron Capricorni B system. There's only three things I'm really going to change here. It's going to be the minimum landing pad size. Definitely turn the used surface stations to no. And your minimum price age should be no longer than eight hours. If you want to sell on a fleet carrier, you can have that selected as yes. Now, I'm not going to select fleet carriers in this example. You can make a whole pile of money selling on them, and the back and forth and back and forth is really quick. About the biggest drawback about selling on fleet carriers is you're not going to earn any trade rank. Ultimately, though, we'll be selling at a space station, so I did sort it to where it would have the highest payouts at the top. Now we're just going to have to worry about demand. Now, this one looks like a really good place to go. This purchase location has only been live for about 32 minutes, and its demand far exceeds what I have in my cargo hold. Chances are I'm going to be able to sell everything I have there. Now, well, we should have went to a whack rebut, but however the hell you say it, but we'll go to Madden and sell everything there for, you know, less profits because I'm stupid and I didn't pay attention that there was a better price that was only 13 minutes old. Yeah, I'm done. Now that you know how to find the very best price when you're mining an Elite Dangerous Odyssey at any given moment, let's go make some money! 
Now, well, made it all the way here without getting interdicted. Kind of wanted to show that. But if it happens to you and you're a noob, just make sure that you match the escape velocity over and over. Don't slow down because then you'll get murked. But you won't do that because you're a smart commander. You're going to make it all the way here without getting totally ganked by NPCs. Now, let's head over to the commodities market. We're going to be able to sell all of our platinum in our cargo hold, as well as the six tons of platinum that are inside of our hoppers right now. Now, you can't get to that until you sell everything that you have in your cargo. Now, now that's not too bad, that's almost 31 million for just a few minutes. Hopefully this Elite Dangerous Mining Guide was helpful to your gameplay as well as taught you how to laser mine an Elite Dangerous like a freaking space boss. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for future Elite Dangerous Odyssey updates. I guarantee if you found this video helpful, you're gonna love this next one.